Hi and welcome back. This is a speed drawing and today I am going to draw a kingfisher again on watercolor paper from Flying Tiger of Copenhagen and today I am using Faber-Castell Eco color pencils. That's their red line. I got a 48 set of those that I bought all the way back in 16 and I don't use them very much so I dusted them off and used them for this drawing as I did yesterday with my guinea fowl I'm filling in some general color in in some spots here to establish where the main colors go and then I go in and refine and detail later on. This is the head and the bag of the bird. And I got a very nice reference photo from a Stefan Mechler from unsplash.com that I have been using. And um, yeah, the the pencils are nice. They are quite inexpensive. At the time I bought them, the 48 set was the largest set you could get. And um, shortly after, of course, they released the 60 set. Um, in some other regions, this is sold as the classic uh, color pencils from Faber Castell. And of the, I've been drawing with four brands of inexpensive pencils the last few days. I used a combination of Statler's, some Norris Club, and some Ergosoft that I got. And I am not a big fan of either. Excuse me. They really struggle with the dark colors and um, I had a little bit of breakage. I don't have footage of that drawing I did with that and I ended up using some black ink marker to to fix up the, the dark areas on my drawing. I might film a another drawing with those although I, I don't feel much like it because it was not all that much fun. I'm a huge fan of Statler otherwise, but exactly there, that range of colored pencils is not my favorite. Then I went on and I did a drawing that I also didn't film <laughs> with Stabilo green colors. And I did a crowned heron, the crown, crown crane, I think, uh, with that. I didn't film that either. It was a lot more enjoyable. I got a 24 set, which is the max set you can get. And that went a lot better. And you can see that drawing on my Instagram. And uh, then yesterday I did a guinea fowl where I was using Derwent Academy pencils. The process was quite okay, but it was really a struggle to get things dark enough and um, I, I did get it somewhat okay but um, but it was a little bit of a struggle so in comparison these worked a lot better I'm quite happy with how they went down on the paper and the color intensity the medium hard I'd say and, um, they're a little bit too soft to, to do details with. And uh, here I'm starting to add in some black sections. And I'm actually not starting with the black. I'm starting with a very dark blue. It looked like an indigo or something. I didn't look too much at the color names. They are actually on the pencils. Um, I just did look. And... Um, so yeah, I'm coloring in the dark areas there, around the eye. 
and I believe I use this one for the beak as well. So far so good. It, it's going okay here for, for the basic layers. The struggle comes when I start detailing. And that goes a little while. Um, so yeah, and there's the beak. And so yeah, these were quite pleasant to use. I uh, I didn't pick the best subject for this drawing, or rather for the paper. The paper is quite textured. It feels almost like drawing on a canvas. And so there were there are some really fine small details on the head and the back and the wings of kingfishers. There's little tiny turquoise dots. And that turned out to be quite difficult to to do on this paper because I couldn't really define my spots very well and then when I went to color in between them I couldn't really make out what I had done already. So I'm not, I'm not I should have either drawn just the head and then done it bigger or picked some different paper but as I'm kind of doing a comparison of of the pencils I would use, I, I used the same paper as I'd done with the others. The paper is quite fun to work on any other way but uh, I should just not have picked a subject with small details like that. So yeah they layer nicely. Start with a and the little pot you see there at the bottom, that's the one I use when I sharpen my pencils. And sharpening, I did a lot of with these. They they wear down fairly fast. And um, I had some breakage too. That This set has been breaking on me pretty badly. And I'm not entirely sure if it's because they have been on the floor by accident. I actually don't remember if they have been falling on the floor here or if they were just like that when I bought them. Uh, I I got some breakage and I was messing around with different sharpeners because they're also quite thin so the first sharpener I used was a little too big for them and then I finally found a sharpener that fit but I still had some breakage. That's too bad because these are the ones I, I like the most to work with. See how nice and dark I can get the blacks here. No struggle whatsoever. So. That is. Uh, I have postponed doing this drawing for a long time. I have a friend who's been asking me, I think, two years for a drawing of a kingfisher. And I've, I've just not done it because, exactly because of all the details, to be perfectly honest. I think it's a, it's a type of drawing that would suit acrylic painting very well or some other opaque medium where you can go in and you can just add the spots at the end. I will maybe do a gouache painting of this. Um, and yeah, I picked out three different oranges. And they work okay together. But it needed to be a little more brownish than it is. Uh, it's kind of a orangey rusty color. I'm not as orange as I'm making it, but I was trying a little bit to adjust it, but it didn't turn out very well, so I didn't do very much of the adjusting later on. I was just missing those golden browns to do that with. Or a kind of a dark red and Indian red or English red or something would also have helped but 
there weren't really any that suited my needs. So I worked with what I had. It is going to be so much fun going back to high quality pencils and paper after this. It will make me really appreciate the good papers and the good pencils. Yeah, there's something to be said about these. They, it's it's a challenge to to work with them, and they have they have a different expression, and especially on this paper than my high-end art pencils. And they actually have a quality to them, these ones, that I, I like. I, um, I don't mind that it shows that it's a pencil drawing. Yeah, that looked like the right color, but it was gold, actually, so I put it away. And the, it has a little bit of the fells has blown open a little bit on its chest, so it has kind of a pale spot there on the front. You can see the the color of the downs underneath that is white beige. And I ended up mostly using them the white, leaving the white because I didn't have a good beige color. Yeah, there I was trying a red. It worked okay up on the head, but not on the belly, so I put that to one side. It was more red than the indication of the paint on the barrel. Yep, broken, sharpened. I cut out some of the sharpening parts and that was mostly because I was struggling with the sharpeners. I didn't need to have a great big long pause with me rummaging through my stuff to find a sharpener. And here I'm starting to struggle with the head because I got all those tiny little fine dots there. So I was trying to figure out how to do that. Um, start up first marking up some little circles, but they were very hard to see afterwards. It's hard to describe how it was. It's because you can't really make out s lines for small details when the the texture of the paper is only marginally smaller than the texture you're trying to to draw. So it's just a smudge of color. And I just poured out all the pencils of the the case before I started filming so that's why they're all over the place yeah just it looks okay on a distance I have to say I was busy looking at the drawing not so much on my camera actually I was watching the camera very little because I was staring at the reference photo that was in front of my my camera show on on my screen. So just I decided to go with kind of more of a texture approach where I didn't really draw the individual dots. I was just kind of indicating them by leaving some gaps in the in the color so I keep working at that that's the thing you will see me do I'll go back and work some parts over here and there and yeah that one broke again sharpen it once more yep once more, well, keep on sharpening until we find a steady part. I'm glad they are not expensive pencils because this would have driven me insane. Yeah, I picked a darker blue to go in and do that texture thing again to see if I could 
make them more clear. It worked better the second time. Although the paper started to struggle a little bit at that point. So I got this kind of project where I'm trying to use up some of the art materials that I am unlikely to to purchase again in order to clean up and make room. I got way too much stuff at the moment. And um, so I'm not buying any more of this paper, but it will take a while before I run out. Because a Flying Tiger of Copenhagen is kind of a funny kind of shop chain. They they buy up stuff that they sell in their, their stores. And often it will be something they only get that one time. And I thought this paper was part of that. So I went and I bought myself silly in. I have no idea how many pads I bought, 10 or 15. They're not very expensive and they're really good with ballpoint pens and a few other things. And uh, only when I bought the last few packs, the lady told me that it's actually in there, a permanent thing in their inventory. So I could have just bought what I needed and gone back and bought more later on. But hey, live and learn. And I have used it, I've used it for swatches, I use it for certain types of drawings and stuff, so I'm not unhappy with it, but I'm not ha so happy with it that I'm gonna go and, and buy a lot more of it, either. But, uh, yeah, for this kind of drawings it's okay fun. Um, kind of working in... I don't draw every single feather on, on birds, but I kind of indicate them by by using strokes that has the right length and direction to, to kind of indicate feathers. Then I might draw kind of a feather here and there, like that chest there. I actually drew around the edge of it to, to show that it is a f feathers that sticking out a little bit. Uh, oh man, and all that orange took a lot of work. So, um, the benefit of this type of pencils, where you don't necessarily get a lot of color payoff per layer is that you gives you a lot of control and it really allows you to adjust the color depth and the intensity of, of things and and blend things together by layering which works really well for for this type of drawing it takes some patience to to get anything done but I think it's worth the the effort. So, and even though this is not the drawing I like the best, it was the drawing I had the most fun doing, aside from those details. <laughs> because the pencils, in general, worked well. Uh, so. For people who want to try colored pencils but don't want to pour out a lot of money, these are easy to get pretty much all over the world and they're not super expensive. And I'd say a color range of 60 is plenty. I, uh, I might get a 60 set to, just to see what the color range is in it. But I was, I'm pretty happy with how it is in spite of 
missing a couple of browns. I could have mixed my way into it, it was just... I was being lazy. And at this point I kind of start realizing that I actually drew this one a little too putty. Um, but it was kind of too late to, to correct it, so I left it as it was. Uh, we'll just say it's a female full of eggs or something. <laughs> I'm good at making up stories to excuse my mistakes. So, going in, want to darken that up a bit more here and there. Not all of it, but some of it to, to shape the head a little bit. And at this point, I've put in so many layers on that head that the paper can't really hold on to more pigment. Um, I start on the back wing there. You can just see an indication of some some feathers on the bottom part there, and there's those dots. And I start actually calling them in, but calling between them kind of didn't work <laughs> at all. So, and darken up. that spot there and found out it was actually the, probably the edge of the wing so eventually it will get a little bit of shape and it needs to be darker and it was the direction was wrong for my hand, so I turn around and gosh, well, now nobody can see what I'm doing because of the shadows. And I apologize for the flicker. I have a lightning issue. I want to film with daylight lamps and they some days they make my camera flicker like crazy. And it's, I found out it is usually when there's too much white on the screen at one, any one time. And um, I have tried to film with other light bulbs in my lamps, but then I end up getting a headache. And I also can't get the colors that I want. Because the light is too red. So, I'm sorry for the flicker. I hope I will eventually find some lamps with a different frequency, but for now things are what they are. Nobody pays me to do these videos and I, my budget does not allow me to go out and buy super professional lights at this time being. So I pick out some greens, some teal greens for the back, and it ends up being a lot more green than I wanted it to be. I should have gone over with some blue, but those dots there, they kill me, so I, lo <laughs> I kind of, I didn't quite finish the story. Because it it did it uh, it just ended up being a weird green smear on the back there. But I'll give myself points for trying. Trying and failing is part of learning, so gotta do it sometimes. Yeah, and another broken pencil. You can just feel them the lead wiggle in in there when you use it and um, yeah you can use it for a little while but eventually it will come out and you have to sharpen it that's really the worst thing I can say about these pencils it is that they they're prone to, to break 
but if it is just my set here or if it's general I can't tell because it's the only set I ever had so This is not the, my best filming either. It's really hard to see what I'm doing. But yeah, I'm really struggling with those dots on the, the wings there. And it was the same issue as up on the head, that it was difficult to color around them. And it was mostly because of the texture of the paper. My pencil was sharp enough, um, but I just couldn't figure out where they were once I got started. So yeah. Should probably have left it at that, that, but I think I go in again and do some more, and that makes it worse. I'll try and go in with a dark green, and here the paper is saturated. It just can't really do anymore. I get a little bit of detail in there and I am trying to adjust with the blue to, to get a little more blue. It looks good on camera. It looks not as good in real life. Camera is really generous when it comes to colors. It, it just color corrects things you do. Working a little bit up on the face again. Still not quite happy with the contrast up in the black. And I realized I missed a little bit of orange on the edge of that white edge there. And there's just so much dust now on my paper that I'm taking my kneaded eraser and pick it up because if I brush it off I risk that I make funny colored streaks all over my drawing. So cleaned up and let's find a scarlet red because the feet are red orange and I don't have the right color for that so I need to mix my way in. And it was dull, and then it broke, and then I sharpened, and I sharpened, and I sharpened it some more. And, yep, yeah, we got a tip. And a mess. So, here goes tiny little feet. And for starters, I only do kind of the shadow area on the feet with this red. Because I'm going to go in with an orange and finish them. We are nearing the end. Just missing the feet and the branch. I was very tempted to take some fine liners and, and fix up some of the details on that. But uh, I resisted. I got some fine liners from Fabio Castell so I could have done what I did with my first drawing and just said okay well I'll do this uh, as brand mixed media drawing but I resisted the temptation so starting to put in some color for the branch and we're closing in on the end
just needs some texture to it as well. Yes. Base color. Let's grab a brown because I need some shadows on those feet. There we go, and some claws. And that color will do well for texture and shadow on the branch. So here we go. Fixing up a couple of little mistakes I made. Put the black blue on the tail a little too far down, but managed to cover that up with the brown. And a little bit of that color up under the belly as a reflection shine brings things together. So, that's about it. I'm just finishing off the last little bits here. Yep. Very close to it. Yeah, I want the end of that branch to go to the edge of the paper and yeah. We're about there. Just a little bit of touch up. I could have done more. I mean, uh, I needed to add more orange to that belly by a lot. And maybe have tried out some more reds and browns to to fix up the color depth. But um, I decided just to leave it as it is. I, um, I want to draw another I kingfisher at some point but um, I was struggling too much with the paper for this one to to do much more just a little bit more black here and there where it's needed a little careful with the black never do it as the first layer and never do it alone it is always mixed with something yeah bottom of the beak and the eye do the eye come on yep check that was just what that needed the details here and there yep so mock up wing but overall hi bye give me a like and see you